G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, you know what it's like. You've got a low or flat tyre on one of your vehicles or your trailers you haven't used for a while. So you've got to drag out the air compressor and run a mile of cable across to hook it up or you run a mile of air hose across your yard or you get out your bucket of air. So here's the magic bucket of air. I did a video on this a couple of years ago. And anyway, I had a, uh, a request from a viewer in the last video I did for more information on how I plumb it, uh, how I plumb up this thing. And so basically I thought, okay, I'll give a bit more of an overview, a closer look at it. It's pretty straightforward. You know, you've got a bucket of air that you can fill up off your air compressor. It's a 9 kg gas bottle that's been repurposed, original fitting's been taken out, and it's had a post put in that you can fill it with and also dump air out of. So that means you know you can take it anywhere you want portable air, you can blow up your car tires, or you can take it in the house and blow the dust out your computer, or you can take it up the front yard and blow the motor off, or you know, anything. It's it's very, very handy. But it's also handy uh, to act as extra capacity for your regular air compressor. So, you know, you've got to fill it up off the compressor. So, you know, if you're not using it as portable air, you can leave it plumbed into the compressor in the same fashion. And it just gives your compressor extra tank capacity. I mean, those little direct drive compressors have only got poxy little tanks on them anyway. I've got quite a, a reasonable size compressor. But even with this, it gives my compressor probably another 30% capacity. Now that's very handy, you know, it's all good if you're spray painting or running air tools, it just stops the motor kicking in so often. And uh, yeah, that's the way to go. So okay, I'll show you basically how this is constructed, give you some tips on doing it, and I'll just show you how it's plumbed into my uh, main air compressor and things you should consider. Alright, we'll get on with it. So here's your basic old LPG propane 9kg bottle. I mean, you use whatever size you want, but this is a handy size. You can carry this around. I mean, it's not heavy because it hasn't got all that liquid gas in it, you know, so it's not like humping a full LPG cylinder around the yard. So, first off, these are pressure tested more than twice as high as a normal air compressor, so they are immensely strong. They don't have a drain valve, so that means you can only put dry air into them. You're not to put uh, air that hasn't been through a dryer or, uh, or, a, or a filter. Otherwise, you know, they'll get moisture in the bottom and you can't, you can't drain it off unless you tip the whole thing upside down, which I suppose you could do. Uh, and when you look at them, 
basically you just have to have a way to get the air in and the air out. Now, how you do that is up to you. I'll show you how I did it. It was basically just a, a T-piece with an inlet and an outlet. You could use one-way valves. You could plumb it up with whatever air fittings you've got. It's up to you. But basically it's just a matter of hook it up so the air goes in and you can shut it off so it doesn't come out again when you disconnect it. And then you have a, a tap to let the air out and uh, blow up the tyres. Simple as that. Now working on these cat is safe provided you do it properly. These are not things you play around with um, carelessly because any gas fumes that are in there you can get an explosion and it could, it could kill you potentially. So you make sure that you never work on these um, as far as drilling, cutting or welding unless they're completely full of water. Okay, you t take, that, take that bung out. They're hard to get out these bungs because these taps, because they go in on a tapered thread and then they use some locking gooby goo on there as well. So the first thing is to get that tap out, which uh, can be tricky. You may have to make up a big pipe wrench, slotted pipe wrench to get onto it so you can untwist it. But once you take that out, well then, yes, to work on it, you fill it with water to the brim. You do not use any power tools with it because the sparking from the armature is enough to ignite gas and you definitely don't weld or cut on it once again unless it's completely full of water. Do that, you'd be quite safe. In fact, once you've filled it with water and drained it out, well, the gas is basically gone. But to be safe, leave the water in, fill it up till it overflows, then tip off enough so you've got about an inch space so that when you weld it, um, welding it can boil, will, it will boil the water around the, the you know, close to the metal and it can push steam out and you don't want steam getting into your weld and uh, you don't want to scald yourself. So that's all there is to it. So yeah, now theoretically you could, if you haven't got a welder, you could theoretically take out this valve and then you could basically cut off the top of the tapered thread and you could drill and tap uh, into the brass, this brass fitting, so that you could put an adapter in, you see, and then you could refit the taper back in and you could do it that way. That's one way of doing it. I basically did away with the tap altogether. I mean, you can plumb into the tap also as it is, but the trouble is the actual uh, diameter of the uh, aperture in the tap is is very small. It's not very big. It's uh, it's not even a quarter inch. So it's going to restrict your airflow, and you want good airflow. You know, if it's going to be a reserve tank, you don't want it just you know pissing out at some small amount. It has to be able to get a good airflow. So you either cut the tap, you know, either take this out, modify it, do away with the tap bit, whatever put it back in or you do what I did and that's take it out all together, get rid of it and then you machine up something to go in there that is uh, basically a union that you can um, put taps into. So we'll have a close look at mine now and uh, you can just see how I did it. Okay well here's what I've done. I've got a piece of round stock, solid round stock I've machined a shoulder onto it so that it fits into the, the threaded section of the tank and fits and sits on the the metal part of the tank that you can weld on. There's a good thickness of metal there. It's the only part of the tank you can weld on safely. Out through the centre of the round stock, I've drilled up to about here, so it's only open on the tank end, and then I've drilled and tapped into that centre gallery in two places for taps, inlet and outlet. Now, don't attempt this unless you are a reasonably okay stick welder or welder. Uh, it's a bit tricky to get in because of the, the handle there being in the way and you're welding a round item which is more difficult to weld than straight. But anyway, the welding may not be pretty but as long as it's strong is the main thing. I went round, uh, did a bead weld all the way round, and then I went round a couple more times and just you know went over it, built it up. So it's never going to let go. But I mean, yeah, unless you're a reasonable welder, well you know, maybe not. 
don't do this. You do all this at entirely at your own risk. I'm just showing you how I did it. Okay, well that's it. That's all there is to actually plumbing them. Now, whether you use one tap or two taps is up to you. I use two because I've got a male and a female, the same as you would have for regular you know, airline connection. So this is your fill and this is your empty. And I've got a tap on both. You can't use a one-way valve on your fill if you're going to use it as a reserve tank because the air has to go both ways. So you have to have a tap on the fill. On the outlet, you could do away with the tap if you've got fittings, uh, say air dusters and things, or tire gate, tire um, fillers which have got taps on them. But I like a tap on both. That way I can use fittings like this which don't have taps on them and uh, you know, it just gives you more control. I mean, how you do that is up to you. You could theoretically get away with just using um, one filler. You could basically just have a female with a tap on it. But you would have to have a male connector for this end and the tank end. So you basically have to have a, connect a connector hose with a male on each end, which is no problem because you know, it's only going to be a short piece of hose anyway. So, you know, that's a thought. You could just have the one, the one female connector and just use males on each end. So that's it. Now, I'll, uh, I'll show you how you uh, hook it up to the tank. Just one other thing, too, um, when I think of it. These cylinders have, of course, LPG and propane in it, which is a, an odorless gas. They put a deodorizer in it, which uh, accumulates inside these tanks. And unless you flush these out with the water, you'll get a gas smell, even though there's no gas. You'll, you'll smell the deodoriser because it's still going to be in the tank. So it's always a good idea to wash these tanks out with water. It's water soluble. Fill it up with water, let it stand overnight, flush it out, do that a couple of times. And then uh, put the tank outside and let it vent out, dry out in the sun. You're good to go. The, uh, I mean, once again, as I said, you should never ever work on these things unless they've got water in them anyway. But as a, if you would say, just um, modify the original tap in some way, you would, unless you flush the cylinder, you will get a gas smell come out of these. All right? Okay. All right, now we'll look at the, uh, the connection, which is very, very simple. So here's the connector. All you need is a single hose that goes into your main airline from the tank. You can see that laying on the floor, the blue line there. You can see it goes up and it uh, plumbs in just before the main tap for the, for the tank. So that means that you've got maximum compression, air compression in both tanks. If you plumb it in after the regulator, well it'll only pump up, it'll only compress in the tank to the pressure that the regulator set up, which is a bit useless. So you're probably thinking, well, why has Rob got it before the, the water trap? You know, he said only put dry air into the tank. Well, the reason is because over here going up and down the wall is a water pipe intercooler water trap that I made up. And if you go through my videos, you will see how to make one of those. The problem with air compressors is that the air coming out of the pump is hot. If you ever touch the pump on an air compressor, you know it gets pretty hot. Now the air's hot also, it goes in the tank. It's warm air. Uh, as it goes in the tank, it goes from a high pressure area to a low pressure area in the tank. It will um, condense out some moisture. That's why you get moisture in the tank. And the tank met is made of metal, so it also will cool down the air to some extent. But basically, the air coming out of the tank will be warmer than dew point, so you have to get it down to dew point. So that's why an intercooler uh, like that is the ideal way to go. It will cool the air down so the, the water trap on the tank can work. And if it's a good intercooler with the water traps that build into it, it will basically do the job of the water trap as well. And that basically is what happens. That uh, water trap never gets anything in it because the water trap on the bottom of the vertical pipes, which you can see going down to the floor, there's taps there, they're drain taps, and uh, all the water is collected in there. So, yes, you must use dry air, so you might have to put another water tap in. Uh, either way, 
the water traps that you get on compressors these days are mounted too close to the tank. They can't possibly work because the air going in is too hot. I can pretty much guarantee they never get anything in them. Uh, you must have a water tap at least a metre away from a tank if you're just feeding it uh, with an air hose because it, at least that gives it some chance of cooling down the air charge. But ideally you should use an air cooler like that. All right, well that's it, folks. Um, you couldn't get anything simpler. And I mean, I hope I've answered the, uh, the original question. And uh, yeah, it's certainly a handy, way to, handy thing to have, a good way to go because you've got portable air and you've got uh, a way of boosting up your, uh, your little compressor to give it a few more uh, cc of capacity. Okay, that's it for me. See you next time. Cheers.